Queen Rania of Jordan sat down with CNN's Christiane Amanpour last night to condemn the famine in Gaza, which has already killed at least 20 people. Let's take a look. And, you know, this has been a slow motion mass murder of children, five months in the making. Mm, now, growing public criticism of America's role in enabling this humanitarian crisis seems to have provoked some shifts in the Biden administration's messaging. Politico reported that President Biden will consider conditioning military aid to Israel if Israel pursues a large-scale invasion of Rafah, where 1.5 Palestin million Palestinians have been told to take shelter for safety. Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman had a strong reaction to this news, tweeting in response, quote, Israel has the right to fully engage Hamas to its end. Hamas deliberately harms and hides behind civilians, not Israel. Until Hamas surrenders, frees the hostages, and ends this humanitarian tragedy, I do not support any conditions. Now, we already have some laws in the books about this. The lay law already prohibits the American government from using funds to fund foreign security forces when there is credible information implicating them in gross violations of human rights. As The Guardian reported back in January, a review of internal State Department documents shows that special mechanisms have been used to shield Israel from U.S. humanitarian rights law. So Fetterman's pushback offered, uh, got, got a lot of attention on the internet, in part because uh, I think a lot of the left pointed out that when a left-leading politician breaks ranks with the president, they are told that they are trying to help Republicans, that they are the enemy of the people, they want Trump to win, yada, yada, yada. He's coming out very strongly against the president during an election year when he barely made it through his own electoral contest and is now saying that he thinks there should be absolutely no conditions whatsoever on U.S. aid in direct violation of American law. Yeah, look, I, I think um, Fetterman has recently made some smart, savvy political decisions that have made him more popular in terms of being so condemning of Hamas. I don't have a problem with that part of what he says, but as we brought up on the show multiple times, and you and I don't agree about a lot of aspects of this conflict, but we do agree on this, it does not make sense to me, it is not America first, to say that a foreign government deserves an unlimited amount of U.S. aid, no matter what they do in all circumstances. I would argue that uh, prioritizing another country's defense military budget is already, is itself a very suspect act and one that a lot of Americans on both sides of the political spectrum, all sides of the political spectrum, um, are not wildly in favor of to the extent they even know of, uh, about it. Um, so, so that is uh, interesting. And, and again, you know, Biden now saying, well, maybe we would condition aid. It, it is, fr frankly, uh, past presidents, including Republican presidents, Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush, were perfectly willing to, at some point, speak up to Israel and say, okay, that's enough of that. We now yeah. think this is harming our interests. So there, again, there's nothing new or weird or, or, or contrary to American interest to say, maybe our position is enough is enough. Yeah, and this was the subject of my radar yesterday, right? Does this ultimately make Biden look weak to not be able to, or willing to do what other U.S. presidents have been willing to do? Now, we didn't just get pushback from John Fetterman after his comments over the weekend with uh, Jonathan Capehart, where he intimated that he had a red line of sorts in Israel. Now, take that with a grain of salt. He basically said, I have a red line, but also I'm not going to do anything about it. It's a fading pink line. <laughs> it's like the line on the COVID test where you can't quite tell. <laughs> well done, Robbie. Well done. But even, even that fading pink line was enough to provoke a response out of Netanyahu, who said in an interview on Sunday, um, you know, I have a red line. You know what that red line is? That October 7th doesn't happen again, never happens again, and was... Mm -hmm. seemingly frustrated that Biden had even gone as far as he did to say there were any limits on aid to Israel. And of course, there is also the Washington Post reporting about there having been a hundred different weapons packages made to Israel over the last five months that largely flew under the radar because they were small enough not to trigger congressional approval. Mm. So what happens as we get closer and closer to election time, as there's increasing scrutiny on the humanitarian crisis, I think uh, Queen Rania raises important points watching the that full CNN segment, I think, is advisable because the imagery of kids with skinny legs from starvation with diapers on is really horrific to a lot of folks who already know that over 10,000 kids have um, been killed uh, through other means in, in the course of this crisis over the course of five months. It's only going to get worse from here. Those death toll numbers are only going to get higher, even if there is a ceasefire tomorrow. So how's Joe Biden going to 
negotiate himself not to be seen as complicit in all of that come election time. Mm -hmm. And again, because we're giving the money. It's one thing to say, or to take Netanyahu's position, and to say, this is necessary for the defense of Israel, and we were attacked, and we're going to respond this way. But we are, we are, we are also it, more than tacitly endorsing. We are helping them do it. And I, w I want to know what the administration's view is of why that's in our best interest. They yeah. could just say it. They could explain, well, we are doing this because we think X, Y, and Z reasons. Maybe we think this confines terrorism to the Middle East. This is a past justification that has been made. If we're funding it over there, the war's taking place over there. It's not taking place over here. But then, of course, you have to you have to justify or point to or explain away the attack on on, on, on the base by uh, you know loosely Iranian-backed forces, not probably yeah. authorized by Iran itself. Um, what's going on in the Red Sea? Um, all of these examples of American forces coming under fire, American um, uh, financial interests, shipping interests being disrupted by what's going on. So all of that is happening uh, again because of of our involvement, and I think. Biden, Biden has not explained why this is in our interest. Maybe it's in Israel's interest, and fine, they should go ahead and do it, but we, we, don't, we don't need to, you know, do charity for to it. help them. Right, especially since, you know, as we talked about yesterday, does it make sense for us to be on both sides of the yes. conflict? we're doing the humanitarian we're aid. Digging the hole and filling it back right. in, as you put it yesterday. Which we dropped on people and killed them. Right. Goodness. Right, and so Jesus. one other uh, last point that kind of was, uh, that came up, that people raised, uh, that has been raised, is that, Israel is uh, uh, reportedly going to be guarding this port mm -hmm. that we are now building to get aid into Gaza because, and let's not forget why, because Israel will not allow aid through all of these other trucks, aid, trucks of aid in through these other land entrances into Gaza. Okay, so we're doing this roundabout technique. Someone asked at a, a State Department uh, 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 press conference uh, the other day, what happens if, Israel, if, if Hamas attacks U.S. troops? The troops that are at the port, mm -hmm. building the port, administering aid at the port, you've said that Israel is going to be protecting the port. How is this not, does, how does it not have the potential to implicate U.S. troops directly? And so there's been a lot of, no, 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 U.S. troops are not going to be involved, U.S. troops are not going to be involved, but it's our port. America is building this port off the coast of Gaza. And what is America's response going to be if and when Hamas ends up taking the life of an American service member? Are we now at war in Gaza? And is that a place where Americans want to be? That's a terrifying proposition. Very good point. Thanks for bringing that up. We'll have more rising right after this.